Hello YouTube, welcome back to another Linux module programming tutorial. Uh, we're still going to continue with our character device driver and um, continue from where we left off. The next order of business uh, from the last video was to actually define this file operation structure that we declared and assigned to our character device object. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Okay, so we declared the file operation structure and basically these are a bunch of file callback functions callback methods that we're going to uh, that's going to be implemented and called upon to satisfy the request of the user let's go ahead and implement these methods and we're going to implement them above the definition of our file operation structure okay we're going to start with the device open and it takes two parameters one is the inode which represents the actual physical file on the hard disk and the second parameter represents an abstract open file. That abstract open file is responsible for containing the file operation structure defined here. And all we're going to do when we open up this device is to initialize or, or lock the device using a mutual exclusive semi And this is going to have the effect of preventing other processes, programs, from being able to use the device when we are using it. Next, we're going to implement our read method. This is going to be called when the user wants to get information from the device and it takes four parameters. The destination in user space of where to store the information that we're getting from the device. Next is the number of space available in the structure provided by the user. And lastly is a file offset to tell the current position of the open file. And all we're going to do is display a message in kernel to say that we're reading from the device. And next, we are going to copy the information in the device to the user. So this, the format of copy to user is as follows up here. The destination of where to send information to, where we're getting information from, and the total number of bytes that we're transferring between kernel space and user space. Next is our write method. Our write method is quite the same as the read method, just in the opposite. We have our abstract open file. Next, we have the buffer from which to take information from the user and give to our device the number of bytes to write and as well as the offset to the current position in the device. Okay, so it works the same as before, just we're copying from the user to saying where we're take, gonna put the information to, the destination, and where to get information from. In our case, we're taking information and placing it in our device, then we are getting information from the user and the number of bytes in both of these, return and return signify the total amount of bytes actually written. So next, implement the close method. The close method is as this one is quite simple. And all we're doing is basically releasing this mutual exclusive lock that we had when we opened up the file. And then we simply say that we the file is closed and return successful. Towards the last line of the source file of the kernel driver, all we have to do now is to tell the all we have to do now is to tell the kernel where to start with our driver and where to stop when the driver is finished. And we simply do that by having the module initialize and module exit methods at the end. And we go ahead and save the file at this point. And we're basically ready to compile. Okay, jumping over to the terminal, go ahead and say make clean. Recall the make file looks like this. Okay, all you have to do now is say make. And of course, you have to do all this as the super user. You get a pound sign over here. And now you have the module. Go ahead and say insert mod solidus module.ko. Your module is now installed. You can verify this by doing D message. And as you can see, our module has been assigned and given a major number of 249. It's instructing us to say to make the character device file in the dev directory. So we're going to say make nod. 
And if you do this, you see that the device driver is now being created. Now let's write a quick application then write to our fake device. Okay, so in a new directory, create a folder and in that folder create an application a C file called user app.c and have these include file. Next we're going to define a macro that's going to represent the name of the device file as found in the dev directory. So you have the complete path over here. Next we're going to declare our main method. Next we're going to actually declare some variables. Uh, I is going to have store the number of bytes written. FD is going to represent the file description. I should say the file description descriptor. CH is going to represent a command uh, choice that the user is going to enter either for reading or for writing and these are going to be buffers to represent information written to the written to the device and read from the device. Here we're using the file description file descriptor to open up the device using the name over here and we're opening it for reading and writing. At this point we're going to check for errors if the open method was to return a negative one that signifies that there is an issue. As with all good programming techniques you want to be able to let the user know what's going on each step of the way and prompting them as appropriate. Here we're basically going to tell the user to enter a command and to let the user know what to enter for the corresponding choices to the device. We're going to use a switch format. The first choice is going to be for writing data to the device and basically we're going to prompt the user to enter data. The user is going to enter that data and that data is going to be transferred from user space to kernel space by using the system call of write. The next choice is for reading from the device. In the event that the user fails to follow these choices, we're just going to let the user know that the choice that they chose is not supported at this time. Lastly, we just close the file. Go ahead and save this and jump back to your terminal. Okay, so at the terminal you want to do GCC. Output file is going to be user app without the C. And the input file that we're going to compile is going to be user app dot C. Everything should compile without an issue. And next you want to run your application. It's telling us that the file does not exist or has been locked by another process. That is not true. The only reason why we're getting this issue is because when we created the device file, we, were, we created it as the super user and so only the super user has access to it. And so to change that, we just have to change mod user 777. Each, each one is for user, the group, and others. Change. And let's go ahead and perform this as super user. Okay, at this point, we just want to go ahead and re-execute our application. See now everything is um, going as it should and we're going to say we want to write to the device by pressing the W and now we're going to enter the command that we want to write to the device. Press enter. At this point nothing happens but if you type the message you should see that after you installed everything you installed your driver and at this point, when you open the device, it says device is opened. Now we wrote to the device, and when we're finished with the program, the file is finally, the device file is closed, and virtually your character device was now closed at this point. So now let's run the application again, our user defined application, by saying user app. And now we want to read that information back. And as you can see, we got the choice, we got the information from the device to user space. Well, that's going to do it for this tutorial. Please join me next time. And as always, please remember to rate and subscribe. Thank you.